So when I told my mom that I was going to study philosophy, she was both distressed and delighted. Because you see, for my mother, philosophy sounds cute. And devoting four years of my life to studying Herodotus, Tacitus, Epictetus, and the rest of the isses sounds ridiculous. At the same time, however, she was a little relieved because, and I quote, well, at least as a philosopher, you don't have to spend so much money buying pretty clothes anymore. To be honest, I am not surprised that she associates philosophers with bad dressers. Because although philosophers strive to find the inner beauties in things, presenting outer beauty is not historically their strongest suit. Jonathan Wolf echoed this in his column in The Guardians, saying that academics dress badly because we're so fulfilled with our work. Is that really the reason? Maybe it's a paycheck. Or maybe it's a philosopher's anxiety that our outer appearance is superficial compared to our hidden inner truth. Embedded in that anxiety is a separation between appearance from reality. And here we encounter a philosophical concept, the truth. Although philosophers always pride themselves in their ability to find the truth, there's always been a distinction between inner and outer truth. And the idea is actually not as lofty and complicated as it sounds because we encounter the task of differentiating outer and inner truth in our everyday life. For example, if I ask you, what is an apple? The image that comes into your mind is the appearance of an apple, how it looks on the outside, this red, round, earthy beauty. But its essence, the appleness of the apple, is much more complicated and usually beyond what we can see. So let's say we chop this apple or slice it into pieces so that it does not look like the apple. How then do we know that it is still an apple? Now, this is a very simple example of an inner and outer truth, but I think you get the gist of it. Now, if you search on the internet, why are philosophers dot dot dot, you'll get results such as, why are philosophers so poor? Why are philosophers so arrogant? Why are philosophers bad writers? The most interesting one to me personally is, why are philosophers so ugly? Oh, the audacity. I mean, yes, maybe, throughout history, some philosophers weren't exactly beauty pattern queens, but that's only because they didn't care about how they look. Just as they believed their outer appearance cannot fully represent their inner beauty. And among those philosophers, Plato most avidly separates appearance from reality. To him, appearance leads to opinion, whereas reality guides us to the truth. He says this in the Republic, no one is satisfied with the appearance of the good. It is the reality that they seek. In the case of the good, appearance is despised by everyone. If we associate that to ourselves, our outer presentation is then nothing but a look that appeals to the eyes but not to the mind, whereas our inner essence, what makes us us, can only be discovered by looking beyond the appearance. And therefore, we despise the idea of spending too much time choosing between a violet top or an indigo top because we believe, essentially, clothing and appearance has nothing to do with who we actually are. Now, I am conflicted because as an aspiring philosopher, I would love to believe that how we look on the outside has nothing to do with who we are on the inside. But as a fashion lover and someone who would like to justify those clothes she bought on Black Friday, Surely, sometimes, our appearance reflects a certain mindset within. The most common example is wedding gowns and funeral wares. Although white wedding gowns is not, is not exactly a historical trend, some culture associates the color white with purity and virtue. And therefore, wearing white wedding gown is supposed to reflect a mindset of virtuous and, and pure. And similarly, some culture associates the color black with sorrow and heavier emotion, and therefore wearing the color black, oh, well, sorry, this is just an unhappy coincidence. Wearing the color black in a funeral is supposed to cloak a flood of inner emotion. 
So you see, it's not just the philosophers who are trying to figure out how to use clothing to tie in our appearance with our reality, because we see examples like this in our everyday life. So the question on the table right now is about the purpose of clothing. What exactly is clothing? Why do we need clothing? By choosing to put on different clothing to present different appearance, are we essentially hiding ourselves underneath the fabrics or expressing our thoughts more successfully? Well, perhaps there's a happy medium. Instead of drawing this black and white distinction between outer appearance and inner reality, we can see clothing as a medium that helps us to truthfully express who we are, as well as hide us from the world. And if you think about it, the way clothing come into be in the biblical stories speaks to the idea of covering and hiding. The story goes that Adam and Eve were living happily in the Garden of Eden, free from the self-consciousness of their naked bodies. However, after eating the fruit of knowledge, they realized they were naked and started to cover their bodies with fig leaves. Now, the first realization of nakedness is fascinating because it implies there's something lacking or missing from our most honest figure. For some reason, our natural figure is unnatural and we feel uncomfortable that we have to cover them. Now, that's an outrageous thought, right? Because when we look at birds or apples, we don't feel like there's something lacking from the way they look on the outside. They appear the way they are and they are the way they appear. But when it comes to human being, it seems that from day one, we have to cover ourselves or add a little something to our bodies to make us more us. Now, if anything, the story of the Bible tells us that one of the most important purpose of clothing is to cover and to hide. But throughout history, there are plenty of styles that more literally reveals our bodies. Now, one of those styles is the Dikai Chua style that was popular in the 1790s. This style used nude colored fabrics to show off our bodies and your figure is emphasized because you can see your bodies through the fabrics. It was referred to as nudity a la Greek because it presents this ironic idea of a well-closed nudity. And fast forward to 21st century, some contemporary designers takes the idea of revealing to a whole new level. Sheer clothing becomes a huge trend and frequently shows up in the recent runway collections. And we see models and celebrities dressed in full transparency. And while what's underneath their clothing becomes more directly revealed to us, we can't help but wonder, what exactly are we seeing? What then now is the purpose of clothing? The truth is, our use of clothing has always been a huge paradox. It never fully reveals nor hides us from the world. It does both. Well, I hope you're seeing now that clothing actually ties in our appearance and our reality much closer than we thought it did. It is fashioned based on our desire to conceal, in which sense that desire by itself is a joke we play on one another. Because we all know what's underneath our clothing, but we play along with this optical illusions anyway. The reason why we have clothing in the first place is based on our desire to hide and conceal. But the reason why we choose to put on different clothing every day is based on our desire to reveal and to show. And therefore, to me, the philosophy of clothing is exactly to understand the desire to hide and to show at the same time, and therefore to wrestle with my inner and outer self. Now, the aim of this talk isn't to tell everyone that they should spend two hours every day in front of their wardrobe. Although, judging from what I'm seeing, some of you should probably spend a little more time on that. Hmm. Well, we've all heard the saying, there's more than meets the eyes. And the way I understand the saying is not just don't judge a book by its cover because your inner beauty cannot be fully represented by how you look on the outside. Instead, I think this saying is encouraging us to reflect on the role of seeing in the process of understanding. It's not just the philosophers who desire the truth. We all want to understand one another and ourselves. But we take sight as a given power and end up not trusting this most natural and fundamental ability. Yes, there is more than meets the eyes. 
but don't dismiss what's meeting the eyes. Don't dismiss your ability to look, to see, and to observe. Because the world is complicated, and it requires both our eyes and mind in observation to understand it. Maybe some philosophers do belong on runways, just like maybe there's a little bit of philosophers in every one of us. Thank you.